You're watching BCTV. We're all about Brantford. You're watching BCTV, Brantford Government Television, a service of Brantford Community Television. This program is brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Flanagan here. I'd like to call the meeting of the RTM will be convened on remote, remotely on Wednesday, June 10th, 2020 at 8 p.m. to consider and act upon the following matters. Uh, I don't see a flag, uh, Representative Brockett or anybody. I was going to do the Pledge of Allegiance, but there's no flag. Oh, here we go. Here we go. All right. We'll do the Pledge of Allegiance for everybody. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag, to the United States of America, to the Republic of 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 uh, before we do item one, the roll call, I would like to have a, uh, a moment of silence, silence for our selectman, Joe Higgins, who passed away. He was a, a great guy and I'll be totally missed for the town of Brantford. Uh, may he rest in peace. Uh, Mr. Moderator, this is Representative Sullivan. Yes, Representative. Uh, uh, before we start that moment of silence, I was actually um, hoping to ask for a moment of silence as well. Um, our body hasn't met together since George Floyd was murdered two and a half weeks ago. So I was hoping that, uh, well, I wanted to request a moment of silence, uh, not only for Mr. Floyd and his family, but also for each of us here to reflect upon how we can be better allies to our black friends and neighbors and help to fight against racism here in our community and anywhere that it exists. So I'd like to add um, that uh, reflection to the moment of silence as well. And it's landing in here. Okay, very good. So we'll have a moment of silence for those two items, please. Dennis Flanagan here. Uh, we'll now proceed to item one, roll call. Will the town, will the clerk, or the clerk, or the RTM please take the roll call? Before the roll call, this is Lisa Arpin. Please be reminded to mute your microphone if you are not speaking. We are getting a lot of feedback. Thank you. Uh, 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 Lisa, it seems as if Zoom is unmute, unmuting all of our phones or systems automatically. I keep muting it and it keeps unmuting it automatically. Okay, are we ready for roll call? Oh, yep, uh, our Tim uh, Donna Leach, go ahead, please do the roll call. Okay, Representative Edelman. Representative Edelman is present. Representative Alphone. Representative Alphone, here. Representative Anderson. Representative Anderson is here. Representative Austin. Representative Austin. Representative Black. Representative Black here. Representative Conklin. Representative Conklin is here. Representative Everson. Representative Everson here. Representative Erlanger. Representative Erlanger is here. Representative Flanagan. Is here. Representative Flanagan is here. Representative Greenberg. Representative Greenberg is here. Representative Haken. Representative Haken is here. Representative Healy. Representative Healy, present. Representative Henschel. Representative Henschel is here. Representative Hines. Representative Hines is here. Representative Ingraham. Representative Ingraham is here. 
Representative Jackson. Jackson is here. Representative Kelly. Representative Kelly is here. Representative Lombardi. Representative Lombardi is here. Representative Preet. Representative Preet is here. Representative Riccio. Re uh, Representative Riccio present. Representative Sember. Representative Sember is here. Representative Sires. Representative Sires here. Representative Sumro. Representative Sumro is here. Representative Stepanek. Representative Stepanek, absent. Okay, Representative Sullivan. This is Representative Sullivan is here. Representative Torelli. Representative Torelli is here. Representative Tuhill. Representative Tuhill is present. And Representative Wells. Representative Wells is here. Madam Clerk, uh, you forgot to call Representative Brockett's name. Representative Brockett is here. <laughs> oh, thank you, Representative Brockett. Sorry about that. I, I yeah, I had you marked. Um, ex officios present um, is rep is um, Selectman Dunbar here? No, Let Selectman. I did check. Yeah, Dunbar represent Representative Flanagan's a represent. Uh, Selectman Dunbar is here. Tom, okay. Tom Clerk Arpin is here and he's here and I don't see anybody else. Okay, that's it. That's it. Select McCosgrove is on. So, okay. Select McCosgrove is here. Just got on. Thank you. Okay, so um, the majority leader, Ray Andraham, and the minority leader, Tom Brockett, and myself, the moderator, met, and we're going to do a little bit of difference on the roll call voting um, to right. hopefully, you know, speed up the process. And when uh, a motion is made and seconded, or if it doesn't need to be seconded, and then the question and then debate takes place, and then after any public comments, uh, instead of going through each individual's name, we're going to the, uh, the uh, clerk of the RTM will just record the no votes, just the no votes, and then we'll f figure we'll go on the assumption that all the rest are yes votes. So does everybody understand that? Mr. Moderator, Representative Edelman, I think you should also, um, in case there's any absent uh, ex extensions, you should uh, note those for the record as well. I'll do that also. Thank you. Okay. Hey, Representative Flanagan again. Uh, item number two, approval of the minutes of the previous meetings. Representative, uh, make, Representative Ingraham, I'll make that motion. Um, this is Representative Leach. Sorry to interrupt. I need to make a correction on the minutes that I sent to um, Lisa Arpin. Can I do that at this time? Okay, Dennis Flanagan, what, are, what is the correction? Uh, um, well, we, we had changed the meeting date and I had pre-filled out my um, template. So the date was, um, the I think the roll call date on the form I sent to Lisa Arpin was the 15th and it's actually the meeting was on the 22nd. And then there is one other correction. Um, and I believe this is accurate. Representative Healy was a no vote on item five last time. And on the roll call sheet, it was recorded as a yes. Although in the minutes, it was accurate. Okay, hey, would you uh, represent Representative Flanagan, Representative Leach, who want to make a motion to that effect to uh, correct the minutes? Yes, I make a motion to correct the minutes as recorded. As, as, is there a second? Representative Flanagan. Representative Flanagan. Sullivan, I will second the motion to accept the amended minutes. Okay, there is a motion, Representative Flanger, there is a motion on the floor to accept the amendment meeting, um, amended minutes. Is there any no votes? Is there any meeting at a prior meeting of the RTM Ways and Means Committee in which an additional $150,000 was requested for legal fees? No committee members in attendance knew, nor were there any inquiries made as to what services constituted this amount. In fact, 
if if not for citizens input the entire 150,000 would have been approved by the committee with no questions asked and with no members knowingly what legal service that they had just approved in funding furthermore in direction of the RTM rules in the town charter that funding must be first appropriated for any expenses the $150,000 requested had already been spent and was being submitted for payment after the fact. In, in light of the lack of due diligence in violation of the charter and the additional revelations of the meeting that only the first selectman reviews and approves the town's legal invoices, it is asked that the RTM send this matter to a committee and establish a procedure for which all legal fees are examined and understood by your body before they are approved for payment. This will go to the Ways and Means Committee Moving on from, with another letter from Mr. Cook. In light of the increasing con citizen concern that in excess of $45 million generated by overtaxation, it is being retained by the town in the fund balance and the health insurance accounts, a detailed explanation of the rationale behind this is requested. While it is understood that it is advisable to hold some amount in the fund balance, it is our further understanding that need that the NIST need not exceed 10% of the town's budget, or about $11 million. In addition, the reasoning behind a pro a, a, approximately $20 million sitting in the health insurance count is also unclear. It is asked that this matter be placed on the RTM agenda and sent to the appropriate committee for a full examination of why taxpayers' money is being handled in this community. I will send this to Ways and Means. Moving on with another uh, a letter from Wayne. It is asked that the following item be placed on the RTM gender and sent to the appropriate committee. An examination of the target and unauthorized removal of town hall, corrupt town hall fraud and fighting for a fair process signs for the state highways to the public works department. I will send this to the public service committee. Another letter uh, from Mr. Cook to the RTM. Closes a copy of the article, fighting a small town corruption how it obtained accountability, oversight, and transparency published by the Center for Advance of Public Integrity. In the light of what an increasing number of citizens consider to be an occurrence of fraud, corruption, and cover-up in Brantford Town Hall, it is asked that this article be referred to the RTM Rules and Ordinance Committee for thorough consideration and the se sequent establishment of the approved code of ethics. I will send this to the Rules and Ordinance Committee. Uh, I have no other correspondence. Uh, Representative Leach, do you have any correspondence? No, I don't have anything further. Okay, Tom. Mr. Moderator, Mr. Moderator, this is Representative Riccio. Can I ask two questions to you, please? Yes, go ahead, Mr. Representative Riccio. Thank you, uh, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Mr. Cook, uh, my first question is, are you satisfied with maybe the exception of the first letter? as to the process that the RTM is going about to take with, with your letters? When you're on mute, when you're on mute, mute. You're still on mute, Wayne, you're still on mute. All right, Representative Riccio, we're moving on. Uh, no, no, I just want to say, to answer Representative Riccio, actually, I'm so satisfied, I almost feel like I should, I should take back my first comments to the moderator. So Thank you. I think that's fair. And my second question is, what would you expect us to do with the first letter? Because that's kind of a kind of a gray area. I, that's well, right. the first letter, I thought... I'm, I'm just curious what you think as a body, we should, you know, where, where we should... Uh, take that letter well that's a, that's probably the simplest to tell you the truth i think it's a matter of you know the representatives whoever it is maybe it'll be fine in the in the executive committee i don't know for sure it didn't seem that way at first because i truly believe as a citizen and i've watched the rtm a lot over the years and i've attended a lot over the years that you need some sort of an oversight committee to look at these various special funds something you know because you don't Quite frankly, and I don't mean this disrespectfully, but you really don't even know what's going on in these funds. I mean, the, the Board of Finance, I, mean, I said it for four or five times already, they moved $6 million from one fund to another, and they didn't even tell you about it. Well, that shouldn't go on. And I mean, there's other funds out there too, like this, this retirement fund and this insurance fund. And I guess there's some concern about, you know, the human resources fund that somebody says that I don't know, there's two or three down there that aren't being accounted for. So 
you got to look at these things. That's what the RTM is there for. As not, it's, they're not a checks and balances against the Board of Finance. You guys are the main deal. I mean, you're the main deal. The Board of Finance is somehow stemming off of you. Thank you for your comments. Okay, um, Dennis Flanagan here. Uh, Tom Clerk Arpin, would you like to um, talk about the dog licensing? Thank you. This is Lisa Arpin, Town Clerk. Just a quick reminder to the, the representatives and any of the public that might be listening that June is Dog Licensing Month and uh, we are now open to the public. You can um, register your dog in person. You can be urged to use the drop box in the lobby of Town Hall to drop off your application that was likely mailed to you uh, three weeks ago or you can certainly drop it in the mail. Thank you. Okay, Dennis Landing here. I have no additional correspondence. The clerk indicated she has none also, it doesn't have any also. Moving on then to item number four, to consider and if appropriate, adopt a uniform procedure for ordinance enforcement pursuant to town meeting rules A, 236-4-19D, Representative Black. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. This is Representative Black, Chairman of Rules and Ordinance Committee. We met uh, and considered this matter Monday night, June 8th. Um, all members should have received a copy of the draft ordinance. Uh, we approved that with one exception, thanks to uh, Representative Brockett, who uh, noticed uh, inconsistent terminology. Um, and I'll get the, the clerk the uh, the clean copy here, but under section 227-4, uh, the term citation officer is used. Uh, it should be enforcement officer. So with that change by a uh, vote of six to nothing, the rules and ordinances recommended approval of this ordinance to the full body. So I put that in the form of a motion. Okay, there's a motion on the floor to approve this. Uh, is there any discussion from members of the RTM? Mr. Moderator, this is Representative Henschel. Representative Henschel, go ahead. Yes, I'd just quickly like to say that uh, Rules and Ordinance has been working on this particular ordinance for probably almost two years now. And it's particularly important because in our town code, we currently have, I think several dozen ordinances which um, entail fines for people for infractions and without any enforcement enforcement ordinance that follows state required he froze hi this is a representative Riccio. uh it looks like the yeah meeting is frozen up no it's just peter it's just peter Anshel froze up all right is there any other further he, discussions he worked him? on this for two years i know and he, he should not. be able to speak yeah but he's not he's like he's, he froze up on me no, okay. hold on, freeze. he can come back he can come back I've, yeah, I just, yeah. uh, uh, any yeah. other members of the r team wishing to speak to this this, uh, Mr. Moderator, this is Representative Black, and just so everybody's clear, this was uh, reviewed and approved, including the change by the town attorney. Um, that's mostly what we were waiting for. And as Representative Henschel said, we've been working on this. This is a hang handover, a leftover from the last session. So uh, we were just before the finish line with this before we went into the COVID shutdown. So uh, we hope to push this over. Thank you. Yeah, um, I'd like to speak, Mr. Moderator. Representative Tuhill, this is Representative Flanagan. Go ahead. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, I'm in support of this. It's true. It took them two years to get this done. It's a very complicated issue, but, you know, I think it really adds to the whole code. Uh, so, you know, I mean, they did a great job, and please uh, support this. Thank you. Dennis Flanagan here again. Uh, anybody else from the RTM wishing to speak to this? Uh, Representative Henschel, are you back? I, I am back. I don't know if I, I lost you on my side or not, but I'm back. Go ahead. I was just urging everybody to vote um, for, for the ordinance. I think it's, 
is, as has been said, it will add significantly to the, uh, the town code and the ability to actually um, enforce some of our regulations. Okay, Dennis Flanagan here, thank you. And Representative Hatchell, anybody else from the RTM? Yeah, Representative Austin. Representative Austin, go ahead. I just want to thank Peter and his committee for the hard work over the last two years. Okay, Dennis Flanagan here, anybody else from the RTM? Anybody from anybody from the public wishing to speak to this? All right, hearing none. This uh, will be our new way of, of voting. So, all those voting no for this can speak up now. Everybody else that doesn't speak will assume uh, approves of this. So, is there anybody voting no on this item? Again, is there anybody no voting on this item? Therefore, this item passes. Thank you very Mr. much. Moderator, this is Representative Brockett. Uh, please don't forget to ask if there's any abstentions. Oh, you're correct. Any abstentions, please. Okay, this item covers, it's passed. Thank you. Moving on to item five, to consider and if appropriate, cre create a blight ordinance from the town of Brantford. Representative Black. Uh, rep Mr. Moderator, this is uh, Representative Black. We did not meet on this. Um, it's our intention as a committee not to meet on uh, most ordinances um, until we can meet in person. They require a lot of complex conversation and interaction with the public. So I'd ask the body to re-refer this. Thank you. Rep Representative Flanagan, so your motion, uh, Representative Black, is to re-refer this item? That's correct. And I'll uh, need to okay, the committee did not meet. Is there a second on this? Representative Anderson, I second. All right, second. seconded. Any discussion from members of the RTM? Hearing none, any discussions from members of the public? Okay, hearing none. Any, anyone voting no against this item? Anyone no voting against this item? Anyone voting or abstain, abstention for this, abstaining from this item? Therefore, this item is re-referred. Moving on to item number six, to consider and if appropriate, approve an appropriation of the Coastal Resilience Fund for the purchase of a property and structure located on 17 Creek Court and act on the resolution of the land acquisition fund to increase fund balance transfer by 125,000, to increase land acquisition by 125,000, resolve that the RTM approves an appropriation of 125,000 in the Coastal Resilience Fund this appropriation will be funded through an appropriation for fund, fund balance. We'll go with Representative Alphone first. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, <clears throat> Admin Services Committee met on June 2nd to hear this item. Uh, we did hear from Jeff Rupp. He is the managing men, uh, member of the Sandra Hurst Trust who owns the property. Um, he did agree to extend the time frame for the original offer which had expired back in April. Um, at that time the committee made a motion to re-refer this item so that we can hear it again in the future once the uh, original agreement had been extended. That did pass in committee with a 7-0 to zero vote to re-refer. I believe Peter's committee also heard it. Okay Representative Black, uh, Dennis Flanagan here, your committee also heard this. Uh, correct, uh, Mr. Moderator, this representative Black Ways and Means heard this, um, and we looked at it particularly from the point of view of the uh, fund transfer, which is our cognizance, and we voted uh, five to nothing to not approve the uh, fund transfer. Um, our feeling was that the, you know, there were a number of reasons um, for myself and particularly the the balance in that fund uh, should not be, there'd be a lot of money, like two thirds of the balance spent on this one purchase and that we have other needs coming up for infrastructure. I know Representative Henschel had a, a long re list of reasons. So um, it's a little bit of pick and choose, but my main reason was that uh, to spend what would be 200,000 after you raise the prop the structure um, 
when you've only put in 300,000 into the fund and we have so much more coming down the pike uh, would be unwise. Thank you. So, Mr. Moderator, this is Representative Rep Brockett, if I may. Uh, Representative Brockett, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, this sets up a complicated issue in so far as the Administrative Services Committee, we referred it and the Ways and Means Committee rejected the funding. I would recommend that uh, we separate them for a vote and we vote on the re-referral uh, first. And it would be my recommendation to the RTM that uh, we not vote in favor of the referral so that we can vote the actual item up or down. Um, so I think perhaps the best way to handle this is to vote on uh, Representative uh, Alphone's uh, motion to re-refer. And then uh, if that motion doesn't carry, we can vote on the item up or down. Um, the RTM has looked at this over a series of three or four months. Um, I think everybody knows all of the facts very, very well. I think the homeowner deserves a yes or no vote. Uh, so I would recommend to the RTM that uh, we first vote on the re-referral and we uh, vote against the re-referral and then we can vote the actual item itself. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Okay, your, uh, your motion is to amend the Administrative Services uh, Committee's uh, motion to re-refer. Is there a second on Representative Brockett's motion? Uh, this, uh, is this is Representative Erlanger, I'll, I'll second, second that. it. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Here. Any discussion on uh, Representative Brockett's motion from the members of the RTM? Uh, uh, this is Mr. Moderator. This yeah. is uh, Representative Go Brockett. Go ahead. There's a, a motion to amend the committee report. Um, could Mr. Brockett uh, just read out his motion again then? I thought we were just voting on the re-referral, but I guess. Uh, yeah, I think Representative Black is correct, Mr. Moderator. This is Representative Brockett. I think we should just, as a preliminary matter, and RTM members vote on the re-referral. Re if we reject the re-referral, then we can set up a motion to vote on the actual item itself. Um, if we don't reject the re-referral, then we're going to be in the same quandary as we are right now. So I think the cleanest way to handle this is to just uh, deny the re-referral and then we can, I'll offer a motion to, to actually vote the issue up or down. Okay, Representative Flanagan here. So if at this point, Representative Brockett, I would, why don't you remove your uh, amended motion until we say how the re-referral goes and uh, Representative Conklin, Conklin remove his second. Is that agreed? Uh, Representative Brockett, to the extent that that was an, considered an amendment, it is withdrawn. Okay. Representative Conklin? Representative Conklin agrees. Okay. So the motion on the floor by the Administrative Services Committee is to uh, re-refer this item. Is there any further discussion from members of the RTM? Mr. Moderator, this is uh, Representative Henschel. Representative Henschel, go ahead. Um, in terms of your voting procedure, this is a little difficult because uh, a no vote will require, uh, I, I anticipate there'll be a lot of no votes. Do we want to reverse this? Uh, my intent on this particular item not here tonight is, uh, is going to be an exception to what I stated at the beginning of the RTM because I, I, I anticipate, uh, Representative Henschel, there, there, there could be a fair amount of no votes versus the yes vote. So this will go back, this will be a full roll call vote. Any further discussion from Representative members? Flanagan? Let's make sure what we're voting on. So they, they thought the motion was to. We're remo the we're motion from Representative uh, Alphone is to refer the, re refer this item. Okay. Okay. Very good. That's that's all that's on the floor right now. Any so further? Representative, Mr. Moderator, this is Representative Brockett. So a yes vote would be to re refer the item, and a no vote would be not to re refer the item. Correct. That is correct, Representative Brockett. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Any further discussions from members of the RTM? Any discussion from members of the public? One quick question. Does this mean that this item disappears for the night and goes back to the committee? 
Well, it all depends on how the vote goes, by Mr. No, Cook. no, but I mean, this is what the motion is for, to send it back to committee or, or to keep correct. discussing it, right? Right, correct. So if we're going to discuss the item, we have to do it now. Correct, Mr. Cook. But if it's procedure, the public can't speak. Well, this is, a, this is a procedure for referral is a procedure item for the, for the RTM only. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. Any further discussion? Mr. Mr. Moderator, this is Representative Sullivan. Just wanted to clarify from Mr. Cook's question. We're voting to re-refer it to committee, and then depending on how that vote goes, there would be a second motion where the discussion of the content of the item will take place. That is correct. You mean tonight, Representative Sullivan? Okay. This is Representative thank Sullivan, you. yes. Yes. Thank you. Any further discussion from members of the public or members of the RTM? So, uh, Representative Leach, this will be the old way. This will be a full roll call vote. A yes vote is in favor of re-referral. A no vote is you're against. Okay, this is Representative Leach. Um, Representative Edelman. I Representative Edelman, you're, Edelman, you're on mute. Representative Edelman, you're on mute. I'm so sorry. Representative Edelman, no, I beg your pardon. Thank you. Um, Representative Alphone. Representative Alphone, yes, based on the committee report. Representative Anderson. Representative Anderson, no. Representative Austin. Representative Austin, no. Representative Black. Representative Black, no. Representative Brockett. Representative Brockett, no. Representative Conklin. Representative Conklin, no. Representative Everson. Representative Everson, no. Representative Erlanger. Representative Erlanger, no. Representative Greenberg. Representative Greenberg, no. Representative Haken. Representative Haken, no. Representative Healy. Representative Healy, no. Representative Henschel. Representative Henschel, no. Representative Hines. Representative Hines, no. Representative Ingraham. Representative Ingraham, no. Representative Jackson. Representative Jackson, no. Representative Kelly. Representative Kelly, no. Representative Leach, no. Representative Lombardi. Representative Lombardi, no. Representative Preet. Representative Preet, no. Representative Riccio. Representative Riccio, no. Representative Sember. Representative Sember, no. Representative Sires. Representative Sires, no. Representative Sumro. <coughs> Representative Sumro, no. Representative Stepanek. Representative Stepanek, no. Representative Sullivan. This is Representative Sullivan voting no. <laughs> Representative Torelli. Representative Torelli, no. Representative Tuhill. Representative Tuhill voting no. And Representative Wells. <laughs> Representative Wells votes no. Okay, so we had um, 28 no's, one yes. Okay, uh, Representative Flanagan here, then the motion to re refer has been rejected. Representative Brockett. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. This is Representative Brockett. Um, so following up on Representative uh, Black's report from the Ways and Means Committee, I would make a motion to uh, not purchase the property located at 17 Creek Court. Uh, is, there, is there a second? I will second it. This is Representative Erlanger. Yeah. Mr. Moderator, I believe that would be the committee report from Ways and Means and not need to, but we can proceed either way. All right. Well, at the representative Flanning at this point, I'll, I'll go along with Mr. Brockett's motion at this point. Uh, any further discussions from members of the RTM? Uh, Mr. Moderator, this is Representative Henschel. Representative Henschel? Uh, yes, I, I um, made comments in both the uh, Ways and Means 
committee and the administrative services committee but i would like to take the liberty of repeating those comments tonight because i think a, probably half of the members of the rtm have not heard them so just to go on the record i if, if you'll bear with me I'd, i would like to read my comments that i delivered previously Rep representative flanagan go ahead representative henschel um, and first of all, I just wanted to say that I'm, I'm actually a great proponent of the Coastal Resiliency Fund that was established by the finance director and by First Selectman Cosgrove. Uh, so this in no way do my comments reflect on that, um, that fund, which I feel is quite valuable. Um, quickly, a little bit of background information. 17 Creek Court is a property bordering on an inland marsh. It's upstream of the Civil Creek Bridge at Lenny's Restaurant. And in order for that area to flood, tidal water must pass under the bridge um, and into the marsh. There are 23 properties in the Limewood Civil Creek area that are subject to the identical flooding potential as 17 Creek Court. This property is in no way unique. Um, the proposed buyout of 17 Creek Court falls into a strategy defined by the by Branford's Coastal Resiliency Fund as a retreat, i.e. properties in a defined retreat zone are bought, they're demolished, and the land is left to nature to reclaim. Um, my feeling is that we need a defined retreat policy before we um, engage in that, that process. The buyout of shoreline properties employing the retreat strategy as outlined in the coastal, current Coastal Resiliency Plan of 2016 should not be contemplated before a well-defined and publicly reviewed set of policies, procedures, timeline strategies, and mapped retreat zones have been generated by the town via the Coastal Vulnerability Working Group and town staff. Without this preparation, the town will become subject to a variety of possible demands, claims, and litigation if 17 Creek Court is purchased at this time without strict policies in place, what is to prevent neighboring owners from demanding that the town also purchase their property? Also, retreat strategies are typically implemented using federal and state grant funding, which usually becomes available after major storms have significantly damaged coastal properties as an alternative to rebuilding those properties. And we, in this case, won't be able to take advantage of that, that particular funding. A couple of factors to consider in this case before designating this as a formal retreat zone. Uh, there are, in fact, there are two factors that could mitigate and delay the flood resist, risk for these properties. Current DOT plans for rebuilding the Civil Creek Bridge include a tide gate, which if, if properly designed would maintain needed cleansing of the tidal marsh while at the same time limiting peak tides and some of the, the flooding events that the properties are subject to. Studies of Branford generated by the Yale School of Forestry also have suggested that the entire Civil Creek upstream marsh area could be protected from major storm related flooding by the construction of a flood gate next to the Civil Creek Bridge and some limited seawalls. Both these actions could result in a near-term abatement of the flood hazard in the Creek Court area and should be studied before implementation of any retreat strategy in that area. This would preserve, this could preserve the, the current use of these homes and their tax base until well into mid-century. And finally, um, in terms of the use of the Coastal Resi Resiliency Fund, um, and most importantly, we should be preserving and building the Resiliency Fund at this time to target the long list of key municipal infrastructure projects listed in the resiliency plan and do this first. Property buyouts should be considered only after careful preparation. And thank you, Mr. Moderator. That was the extent of my comments to both committees. Dennis Flanagan here. Any other members of the RTM wishing to speak to this? Uh, yes, Mr. Moderator. I would like to speak. Go ahead. Thank you. I would just like to thank Representative Henschel for uh, a very succinct argument uh, made uh, and outlining for all of us why this uh, purchase is not a good idea in the first place until we know how we're going to utilize the Coastal Resiliency Fund with some kind of guidelines. Thank you. 
Okay. Representative Lanigan speak. again. Anybody else from the yeah. RTM wants yeah. to speak? Yes. You'd like to speak, Mr. Moderator? Representative Tuhill, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, there was an Administrative Services Committee meeting that I went to um, uh, at the Joe Trapasso uh, Community House. And uh, it was um, stated at that time that there are two federal grants that I think become available annually that, you know, the windows open for these grants and that um, there's a grant, I think from FEMA, as I remember, would pay up to uh, um, either 80% of the total cost of the acquisition. And then that there's another federal grant too, which, which also, I think almost covers the entire amount. So I think we should be on the lookout for these um, uh, grants, you know, thank you. Anybody else from the Representative Austin, you wish to speak? Yes, um, Representative Austin, I agree with uh, Representative Black's comment about the amount of money that we have in the budget. I don't think it's a good idea. I also agree with Representative Henschel that I'd like to see uh, a more formal plan for how we're going to handle these situations. Okay, thank you. Representative Flanagan, anybody else from the RTM wishing to speak? Mr. Moderator, Representative, Representative Riccio. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I want to thank uh, Representative Henschel for taking the time to make the comment this evening. Um, I, I'm not 100% uh, up to date on this particular item. Um, what uh, Representative Tuhill just talked about, uh, some grants may or may not be available, uh, can Representative Tuhill or maybe uh, Selectman Cosgrove care to uh, discuss that a little bit more? Because I would like to know, you know is, is there a, a good chance that we can get these grants? which would help make the decision here with us. And that question is through you, Mr. Moderator, either through the first selection or Mr. Tuhill, who, who just brought up that. Anybody uh, select from Costco or RTM members wishing to speak to this? Sure, I'll, I'll answer the question. Yeah, it was stated uh, in the admin services meeting that there were um, two grant opportunities that uh, come up, there is an annual one, then there's one that usually comes out after an event. And that was the, uh, the uh, one which is a, um, the FEMA funded a higher percentage of the cost. And that was, I believe, up to 90% of uh, pre, pre disaster value. Um, I think the other program is the 75, 25%. We acknowledged that at the time, uh, and the reason why we're coming forward at this time, as I've always said, because there was an opportunity. Um, and you know what? This body is part of the process, and this is where it comes. We brought forward to, to this body, just as we did to planning and zoning, and just like we did to uh, Board of Finance, we are bringing to the RTM an opportunity. Um, just to correct the right, there's probably uh, – there's just 1.3 million in the Coastal Resiliency Fund. Come July 1, there'll be just over 1.6 million. Uh, when we establish that, we, uh, when we do our pro forma with, based on assumptions, we uh, planned on expending, um, I think around 15% of that fund annually. That was just to show pro forma how we would grow. We don't have to, we could send a little less, we could spend more. So uh, I just wanted to address that comment. Um, also, I uh, just will, um, there are other opportunities in, in, in ways to protect the, you know, um, these vulnerable areas. Um, and I've, I've attended two presentations of the Yale School of Forestry um, with that study that they did. But to be clear, this property would have to, would be lost or have to be acquired, uh, whether it was a retreat policy or a hardening policy. It falls below the coastal jurisdiction line. Dr. Mendelson was very clear that the properties below the CJL would not be uh, protected. 
But that said, I do agree, um, you know, with with the comments about establishing a policy, and I've had discussions with staff, and uh, I will be engaging um, staff, not only staff, but I'll be uh, the um, other groups in terms of establishing a um, a land acquisition policy, so we have that, um, you know, available and use that for guidance. Um, again, this was an opportunity. That's why we said we came forward at that time, and uh, that's it. So, thank you. Any other members of the RTM wishing to speak to this? Not any members of the public wishing to speak to this. I'd like to, please. Mr. Cook, go ahead. You know, I said this at both committee meetings, and I think it bears repeating in front of the whole RTM <clears throat> that, and I find myself in a position where if I don't say these things, I'm not sure who would, but, you know, I feel strongly about them. I'm not saying them to uh, waste your time, but it struck me as very odd that you would even be considering something like this. On the backdrop of what this town, the state, um, individuals have done to Jay Medlin. Now, I don't want to be told that this isn't relevant, because this is entirely relevant to what you're talking about. You know, you have a coastal resiliency fund here, which we now is, is, is 1.3 million, going to be 1.6 pretty soon. Well, I would submit that once you use some of that to fix the berm that causes the flooding down on uh, Leeds Island Road, that is a severe public safety hazard, why don't you give some of it to Jay Medlin for the farmland that you destroyed. And, you know, quite frankly, I see this as continuing hypocrisy and duplicity and whatever else word you want to use. I mean, you got people out there saying, oh, we have to start flooding. And we have, well, why don't you start at the prime flooding zone in this entire community? And that's down on Leeds Island Road. So, you know, I really, I get enormously frustrated when you get people like, we hear, name names, and they do things like take out a berm. And I'll tell you names on that. It was Bill Horn and it was John Lust. They oversaw that catwalk project for the Brampton Land Trust. They went and took that berm out and then the whole thing started flooding. But what did the land trust do? It said, oh no, that's sea level rise. You know, my foot at sea level rise. You know, that, it, it wasn't any flooding before the berm came out. So, I mean, where's the consistency here? Representative Henschel talks about consistency and a plan and a strategy. Well, where is it if you don't even address the prime area that is affected now by flooding? You know, and, and it, it's wider than that. You know, the first selectman, he was well aware of this. And he went down there and turned his back on Jay Medlin. State of Connecticut turned their back on Jay Medlin all over flooding. Brantford Land Trust, they just ran for the hills and started crying about sea level rise. Well, that's not that kind of sea level rise down there. This is the type of thing that this community is lacking. It's a lacking accountability. It's lacking, quite frankly, honesty. So when you bring up something like, well, let's take this house down in Pawson Park, I almost laugh. Like, what are you kidding me? You kidding us? You know, I don't even know where to go with this thing because it's so, it's so, you know, ridiculous. You know, why don't you, you know, why doesn't, you know, uh, Representative Henschel's committee turn their gaze over to Leeds Island Road? Why don't you do that? It's a good place to start, better than the house down in uh, Boston Park that only got flooded during the hurricane because you have ongoing flooding down on Leeds Island Road. Now I'll let it go there because this is an item that is in a petition it will be vetted, I hope, thoroughly. But this is the kind of thing that the RTM, and I want to say one more thing while I'm on a roll here. The RTM represents, as you know, the people. The RTM is the main body of anything in this town. Everything else sp springs off the RTM. For selectmen, the board of selectmen, the board of finance, board, everything centers around the RTM. So I was very gratified, I want to say this, that the the uh, moderator sent the letters to committee because this is where citizens take things. This is where they take things, you know, because, you know, back in the 50s, you became our representative. Up until then, we had a direct town meeting. So the RTM is everything in this town. And it's just, it, it troubles me that, and again, I know you put time in, 
that you miss things like this, because this is critical. This is really critical to how we run this community. And I could go on and on with other issues, but I'll let it go there. All right, anybody else from the public wishing to speak to this? Any other you know, member? Uh, yeah. Mr. You know, yeah, I just want to make a comment because it is kind of connected. It is with this, and I think this body should uh, be aware. Um, <clears throat> you know, the Sybil, the Sybil Creek Avenue, uh, the Sybil Creek uh, Bridge is going to be replaced, and part of that project is a replacement of the tide gate. Now, uh, a tide gate is not a flood structure. It is a, but it will prevent the nuisance flooding uh, through the, um, the extreme high tides that does occur. Uh, DEP is essentially um, shedding any responsibility or attempting to shed any responsibility over the long-term uh, care maintenance of that tide gate. We've had several meetings with them over this, uh, even uh, the, the current one, they were uh, uh, reluctant to do additional, uh, any, any address any repairs, emergency repairs. Uh, they, they did come out and they've done some temporarily, but th their plan is to shed any responsibility. DOT's position is they just need to rebuild the bridge. They don't, the tide gate is not uh, part of the bridge. It's not attached to the bridge. Therefore, it's not uh, their responsibility to take any ownership of it. I'm bringing this up because, you know, we have a similar situation over uh, like Jarvis Creek where uh, uh, Mr. Cook was just talking about the Medlin area. They, you know, there was the berm was removed, but there was also a tide uh, structure over there as well that's been in uh, disrepair uh, for uh, a number, a couple years now, a few years ago, and that's cre creating um, some serious flooding issues over there in that area. Uh, not only Medlin, some other property as well as uh, uh, Route 146. Um, you know, I've had meetings with uh, DEP uh, officials, DOT officials over this. Um, and once again, the state is not taking ownership or responsibility over that tide structure. Um, it, it falls within tidal waters. It was, uh, it, the, the town has really no access to it. It's all through state property. Um, but this is one of the areas, you know, again, when I said about 146, here's a, a, a state road that's being negatively impacted um, through through basically a uh, the disrepair of a structure that the state historically has uh, taken managed and taken care of. Um, so you can see even with these agencies and the how they're not cooperating with one another, and that's what we need to press upon. Um, we uh, do through our cog, uh, the town of Brantford and Guilford did request funding to do a corridor study in that area. And um, you know, we, when we were uh, requesting that money, uh, which we were successful in, in getting and hope to have a plan to bring up to DOT. I mean, I sat in the commissioner's office and I mentioned this area over here and the deputy commissioner of planning um, regarding uh, this, this Jarvis Creek. And you have one state agency that is uh, essentially shed it all responsibility over a structure that for decades they maintained and it's negatively impacting um, not only property owners but also uh, a state state road system so thank you okay anybody in the RTM, mr cook just in response briefly you know the first electman's correct that the floodgate does have some impact but that didn't cause the flooding down there because the floodgate was broken before the berm was taken out and when the berm came out that caused all the flooding. As far as the uh, the state goes, once again the first electman is absolutely right. The state has absconded their responsibility entirely. You know, shame on them, the DEP, even the you know Department of Transportation. But you know they they oversee the state. The first electman oversees the town. So with all respect, I think he should be on them like white on rice to fix this thing, because it's in their interest to fix this thing. 
you know, this is a public safety hazard. Who knows what the integrity of that road is with the water running over and under it? You know, what about uh, emergency vehicles when they have to get by? You know, are they going to be able to make it? You know, these are the things. And as far as the environmentalist goes, I mean, they make me laugh too. I mean, the Brantford Land Trust, you're killing every tree in the world down there that gets exposed to that salt water. You know, so, okay, you know, I understand the first selectman's, you know, point about, well, you know, it's the state too. Yeah, but it's mostly, quite frankly, him. You've got to take this and you've got to see it through all the way. And, you know, he really did not intervene when it came to this, you know, uh, lawsuit between Medlin and the Brantford Land Trust. Where was he? He didn't get both sides in and say, you know, guys, can we work this out? No, didn't do it at all. Get a little bit off, but you see the point. You see the point I was making initially. Thank you. All right. Any other, well, comments, but, any other comments from RTM or from Citizens? On yes. Yes. Y yes, sir. Um, this is Who's, this? Who's speaking? Yeah. Representative Tuhill. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I just like to say that, uh, you know, what should happen, right? These, right, these are important issues. That's the first selectman said. And I think, right, because it's a state issue that all of our state representatives in the area should be working on this. I mean, I mean, if the people at the DEEP and the state DOT, they don't want the responsibility anymore. Well, it's not up to them. It's up to the citizens. So I'm saying that all the representatives in our area, they should work together so the state keeps up their responsibility over these tide gates. Thank you. All right, any further comments on this item? I mean, the public or RTM? One quick one. The problem with that, Representative Tuhill, it's quite frankly, politics. You know it and I know it. The state representatives are linked to the Brantford Land Trust. They're not going to go and, you know, do anything counter to what the Brantford Land Trust, you know, agenda and, 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 uh, and, and, and position is. So, I mean, that's the problem. If you want to be really honest about it, they're not going to go to the bat for meddling when their bread is buttered by the Land Trust and all the people. All right. I, I think we've heard enough discussion on this item. Uh... This will be a roll call vote uh, the old way. Uh, again, uh, a yes vote is you're in favor of the appropriation, a no vote you are against. Uh, uh, Mr. Moderator, point of information. Yes, the, the The motion from, oh, I'm sorry, we, we overlaid it with nah, you're getting, Representative yeah, Brockett's. Right, right. 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 We got so, that correct, we got that correct, right, Mr. Raymer. Okay. Uh, a yes vote is you're in favor of the appropriation, a no vote you are against. The the clerk will call the roll call. Uh, Mr. Moderator? I don't, I don't think that's right. I don't either. Uh, Go two, ahead. What? Uh, two. Six, Dave. Yeah. Uh, Representative Black, uh, through you, Mr. Moderator, I thought that uh, Representative Brockett's yeah. motion was to deny the transfer. Is that true, Representative Brockett? That was my understanding as well. Yes. This is Representative Brockett, that is correct. The motion was to deny the the transfer of money and to deny the purchase of property. So therefore, a yes vote, as I see it, a yes it's vote a no. would, to, right. would mean that the town would not purchase the property. A no vote would mean that they would purchase the property. Representative Flanagan, that is correct. Now the clerk can call the roll call. Okay, Representative Edelman. Representative Edelman, yes. Representative Alphone. Representative Alphone, yes. Representative Anderson. Representative Anderson, yes. Representative Austin. I think you're muted, Representative Austin. Representative Austin, you're sorry about, Yeah, sorry about that. Um, while I agree with everything Mr. Cook had to say, I think what happened with Medlin Farms was horrible. <laughs> However, that isn't what this vote is about. And so I have to vote no. <laughs> Representative Black. Representative Black votes yes in favor of denying the transfer. 
Representative Brockett. Wait. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, wait. I, I'm finding this all very confusing. I am not in favor of this. So should I have voted yes or no? <laughs> the we can't tell you how to vote. You can't tell how you vote, Representative Lawson. I don't. I don't. I'm not in favor of it. So is that a no vote or a yes vote? That'd be a yes. That yes. would be a yes, Representative Lawson. <laughs> okay. And that's what I vote. Sorry, I find this confusing. Okay. We all do. <clears throat> okay, Representative Brockett. Representative Brockett votes yes. Representative Conklin. Representative Conklin votes yes. Representative Everson. Representative Everson votes yes to deny the purchase. Representative Erlanger. Representative Erlanger votes yes. Representative Greenberg. Representative Greenberg, yes. Representative Haken. Representative Haken votes yes. Representative Healy. Representative Healy, yes. Representative Henschel. Representative Henschel, yes. <clears throat> Representative Hines. Representative Hines, yes. <laughs> Representative Ingraham. Representative Ingraham, no. Representative Jackson. Uh, Representative Jackson, yes. Representative Kelly. Representative Kelly, yes. Representative Leach. Yes. Representative Lombardi. Representative Lombardi, yes. Representative Pree. Representative Pree, yes. Representative Riccio. Representative Riccio votes yes. Representative Sember. Representative Sember votes yes. Representative Sires. Representative Sires, yes. Representative Sumro. Representative Sumro, yes. Representative Stepanik. Representative Stepanik, yes. Representative Stepanik, was that a yes? That was a yes. Okay, thank you. Representative Sullivan? This is Representative Sullivan voting yes against the transfer. Thank you. Representative Torelli? Representative Torelli votes yes. Representative Tuhill? Representative Tuhill voting yes. And Representative Wells? Representative Wells votes yes. Okay, so um, we have one no and 28 yes. Okay, the uh, motion to deny the appropriation has been, has passed. Okay, moving on to item seven, Dennis Flanagan here, to consider an, appro an appropriate approved participation in the Has Waste Central <laughs> Program for July 1, 2020, through June 30th, 2023, as recommended by the Solid Waste Committee Commission. Representative Conklin. Please don't this is Representative Conklin. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. This proposal was approved by the Board of Selectmen, um, I think in March, and, is coming and came before the Public Services Committee in, on June 4th. And it is uh, approving that the town enter into another three-year contract uh, for the for the safe removal of hazardous waste. It allows Brantford residents and some contractors within Brantford to deliver their ha hazardous waste to a facility with the Regional Water Authority, and then they dispose of it properly. The Town of Brantford has been part of this, uh, and it's really with a 16 community group participating, and they participated for the last 30 years. This passed our committee on a vote of seven to nothing, and I would put that in the form of a motion. Uh, Representative Flanagan here, uh, motion on the floor to approve this item. Is there any discussion by members of the RTM? 
This is Representative Leach. I just wanted to mention that if any of you have never been there, you should try it out. It's a great service um, and I am totally in favor of it. Thank you. Any other comments or discussion from members of the RTM? Yeah, I have a quick question to the moderator. Go ahead. Go ahead, Representative Phil. Yes, uh, just let the note, I would like some more specificity on this contract. For instance, how much is the annual cost? I think it's for what, four or five weeks during the summer, but uh, how much, what's the cost of it this year to the Brantford taxpayers, please? Representative Conklin, Dennis Flanagan here. This is Representative Conklin. I don't have uh, the cost. Um, wasn't was not discussed in our committee. Um, it, the the cost is in each year will be based on the proportion of use by our population. I do know that, but I I don't have a dollar cost. Any other members of the RTM wishing to speak to this? This is Dennis Lanning. Yes, this is Representative Leach again. Just to answer, uh, to answer Representative Tuhill's question about how long it's open, I believe they open mid-May and they go until the end of October. So they're open about six months. Uh, Mr. Moderator, this is Representative Riccio. I'm looking at the uh, documentation that's provided to the town. Uh, that information is correct. It's open from mid-May to the end of October, Saturdays from 9 a.m. to noon. And uh, I personally have used this service and it's a wonderful service. And this is an opportunity uh, for us to remind the Ramford citizens that uh, uh, they really should take advantage of uh, using this facility. Uh, and uh, I will be voting uh, support this um okay hey, any other members of the yard team wishing to speak to this item yeah this is representative I'm, austin of austin go ahead yeah i don't believe we should fix what isn't broken i agree with representative riccio this is a good service it's working well and there's no reason to not vote to support it okay any other members of the yard team wishing to speak not anybody from the public wishing to speak. Should, uh, Representative Flanagan, it should be pointed out, this is, this is an agreement that we, that we approve uh, since all the years I've been on the RTM. It's, it's, it's a no-brainer. Okay, he hearing none, uh, any no further comments from the public or RTM, uh, will a no vote would, will be against this? And, we'll, and a, uh, we'll see, we'll go with the no votes and then we'll determine uh, how many yes votes are remaining. All those against this item uh, and wishing to vote no, speak up now. All right, so uh, Clerk Le uh, the Leach, uh, I'm a, we, can, we can presume that this passes unanimously. Yes. Uh, Representative, okay. uh, Mr. Moderator, point of order. Oh, abstentions. I always keep forgetting that. Yeah. Any abstentions? Nope. No abstentions. Okay. Thank you, Representative Brockett. Um, rep uh, now we move on to item eight to consider and, if appropriate, create an order pertaining to the unused capital funds. Representative Black. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. This is Representative Black. Uh, rules and ordinances did not uh, meet on this, so I make a motion to re-refer and look for a second. Uh, this, is this is Representative, Representative Ingraham. Go ahead. This is Representative Ingraham, I'll second. Okay, motion on the floor. It's been second to second to uh, re-refer this item. Any discussion on the mem from the members of the RTM on the referral? Hearing none, a no vote would be against it. And anybody else wishing to, uh, and a yes vote would be in favor, but we're not taking yes. So for at this point, uh, all those in, are in favor of, uh, not in favor, I should say, of this, uh, uh, of re-referring this item, signify by saying your name. Okay. 
So, clerk, we can assume uh, now this is not abstention. Yeah, I know. I can get abstentions. Okay, this item is re referred. Start with the abstentions next time. Yeah, I know. I'll go with A first, right? <laughs> item number nine to consider, Thanks, right. to consider and, if appropriate, approve participating in the Neighborhood Tax Assistance Tax Credit Program. To consider yeah, tax credit program, neighborhood tax assistance program. Okay, Representative Alphone. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, this is an annual program that the town participates in. The uh, program offers a 60% state tax credit for individuals or businesses that make contributions to qualifying entities, generally 501c3s, and typically 100% tax credit for energy efficiency projects. Um, this year, the state had extended the deadline um, due to the COVID crisis. So applicants had till July to apply for the program. At the time of our June 2nd admin services meeting, the finance director had advised us that there were additional applications yet to be submitted. So at that time, admin services voted to re-refer this item. Um, now that those additional applications have come in, I'd like to make a motion to waive rule 4.4.1 so that we could vote on this tonight. Representative Brock, it seconds your motion. Okay, motion on the floor. It's been seconded to waive rule 441. Uh, any discussion from members of the RTM? Okay, we'll vote on this. So we'll do the abstentions first. Are there any abstentions of waiving rule 441? Are there any no votes? Well, we got the item uh, is 441. Uh, go ahead, Grand Representative Ralph Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, just to add to that, the applicants this year are the James Blackstone Library, Connecticut Hospice, and the Stony Creek Fife and Drum Corps. Um, we do have to approve the applications individually, but I will make a motion as long as nobody uh, disagrees to approve all three applications in one vote. Representative Brackett, I'll second your motion. Motion on the floor to uh, approve all three at, the, at, at once, and it's been seconded. Any discussion from the members of the RTM? Uh, Mr. Moderator, this is Representative Brackett. For Representative. purposes of the clerk, I think we should show them as individual votes, but we can vote collectively on them. So, Representative Brockett, you want to vote, you want to vote on them individually? Is that what we're saying? You're saying, uh, Mr. Moderator, this is Representative Brockett. No, we can vote collectively as uh, Representative Alphone suggested, but for purposes of the minutes, um, we should just reflect that we we voted on them individually as required. Okay, Representative Flanagan here. Okay, any further discussion from uh, members of the RTM? This is Representative Leach. So, um, Representative Brockett, am I, are these all under item nine? Yes, I'll work yeah, that out. With you. Nine. Okay, got it. This is Representative Alphone. I would suggest maybe 9A, 9B, and 9C, just for. Thank you. Thanks, Anthony. Good call. Good call, uh, Anthony. Yeah. Jamie Cosgrove. Yep. Dennis, you should. I mean, if you're going to list them separately, I don't see how you do one vote and then have minutes reflect that there are three. You, you got an expedited expedited way of taking the vote. Just say the three names, do it, and then you're covered. To go on record saying you're going to take one vote, but you'll list them in the minutes as three separate, I don't think is, I mean, I'm not the parliamentarian, but, or the clerk, but I would. Uh, All right, Representative is, Black? Yeah, I am the parliamentarian, this Representative Black. I agree with the selectmen. Uh, if, if we need individual votes, we should just take them. It's, we're, we've got an expedited system. Otherwise, just he's already um, listed the three projects. I think we all know what we're talking about. And if somebody objects to one, they can object to the one. Um, so we, we shouldn't have minutes at variance with what we actually do. That's my, my key point. 
We could have already voted. <laughs> All right, uh, Representative Flanagan here, Representative Alphone. So, so I would like to make a motion to approve all three items under one item agenda, agenda item. We, I thought we just discussed not to do that. No, we thought you said we're going to not do that. Yeah, yeah I think we got to do A, B, and C, Anthony. This is Representative Brackett. It, I apologize. I'll make a motion to approve the individual applications. So I guess the first one would be to approve the James Blackstone Memorial Library application. I'll second that motion. And in the Ray and Graham. Okay. Any, any discussion from members of the RTM? Any discussion from members of the public? Okay, we're ready to vote on the James Blackstone as first. Any abstentions? Any no votes? Any no votes? Okay. We'll go on the assumption that James Blackstone is approved. Representative Alphone, the next one would be what? Uh, I would like a motion to approve the application from Connecticut Hospice. I'll second that, Representative Brockett. Second on the floor. Any discussion from members of the RTM? Okay. Any abstentions? Any no votes? Any no votes? Okay, Connecticut Hospice passes. The next one, Anthony, Representative Alphone. Thank you, Mr. Moderator, Representative Alphone again. I would make a motion to approve the application from the Stony Creek Fife and Drum Corps. I'll second that. This is Representative Henschel. Motion, motion on the floor to approve the uh, Stony Creek Fife and Drum Corps. Any discussion from members of the RTM? Okay, ready to vote. Any abstentions? Any no votes? Any no votes? Okay, Stony Creek Fife and Drum Corps has been approved and the item itself has been approved. Moving on to item 10, to consider an appropriate approval resolution authorizing the first selectman to enter any re restated intercommunity agreement regarding the Resource Recovery Facility Operating Committee, BRRFOC, that requires the approval of the legislative body. Representative Alphone? This is Representative Alphone. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, <clears throat> Brantford is one of, the, one of a group of municipalities that entered into an agreement in 1985 to build a waste energy plant. Um, since then, the asset has transferred to the company that manages the plant. In 1985, the town entered into a 20-year agreement with uh, Cobanta, the managing company, in which it agreed to continue to bring our solid waste to the plant in Bristol. Uh, this is a reinstatement of our 20-year inter-community commitment. The benefit to Brantford for approving this agreement is that it'll allow us the benefit, uh, the benefit to Brantford is allowing us to leverage our resources. There is a lobbying group in Hartford that advocates for the town. Our fee is based on our annual commitment of tonnage. Currently, we pay 75 cents per ton. Um, this agreement is less of a financial burden to the town than the 1985 agreement because there is no large financial burden to build the plant itself. Uh, this was passed in committee with a four to one vote. I'm not sure if there's a minority report or if I know there's additional information that was provided after the admin services meeting to clarify some of this. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to make a minority report, but I put that in the form of a motion to approve. I would like to make, I was, uh, this is Representative Everson, uh, Mr. Moderator. Uh, Representative uh, Everson, is, are you the one that made the uh, no vote? I'm the minority vote. Okay, go ahead. Uh, uh, the reason why I voted uh, against this agreement initially was because I felt I wanted to have the town council weigh in, town attorney, my apology, the town attorney weigh in on a legal agreement um, as I am not an attorney. And also uh, additional information was provided. And in actual fact, the following day from the second selectman, Ray Dunbar forwarded an email to me that had the town attorney's review of the document provided. So, um, in the future, I would just request that if there is additional information, 
with a legal agreement uh, that that be provided to the RTM as well as um, any other information that may pertain to documents such as this. Thank you. Okay, Representative Flanagan here. Representative Alphone, I believe that if there's any questions, that who's the gentleman that's here to speak to that? Mark Bobman, Executive Director. Okay. Any uh, further discussion from members of the RTM? Yeah, Representative, Mr. Moderator, this is Representative Brockett. Go ahead, Mr. Brockett. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I'd just like to uh, uh, once again thank Mr. Bobbins for his presentation at the Board of Selectmen's meeting, um, fully explaining this agreement and the value to the town of Brantford, as well as the additional information. Um, I think it is a, a good agreement that uh, we need to approve. Thank you. You know, any other members of the RTM wishes to speak? Mr. Moderator, Representative Edelman. Right, Representative Edelman, go ahead. Uh, um, I would echo what uh, Representative Everson said, and also I would like to thank the um, town officials and all the individuals that did provide the information that was subject to some inquiries and queries at the administrative services hearing, and um, they uh, listened to those questions and responded accordingly and provided the necessary information. I'd like to thank all those involved. Thank you. Any yeah. other discussion yeah. from members of the RTM? Yes, uh, I'd like to speak to the moderator. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I just wanted to mention that, uh, right, ever since 1985, the town of Brantford has been in this resource recovery plan. In, uh, uh, Ber uh, it's in the town of Berlin. At the time we got into it, our first selectman was Judy Gott. She actually got us into it. She said that from what she could tell in the whole state that this, this was the best uh, plant. There was some ruling or statute from the state at that time that all towns had to join groups you know, for, their, for their trash. So she got us into this. And you know that was in 85, and, and it's what, 35 years later. And it's been a terrific plant uh, all these years. And I just wanted to ask the person that's from Cavanta with us tonight. Now, the cost to, 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 to the town per ton is, is, what's the price that we're paying? And would you tell the people as to how much the other plants charge? Through the chair, please. Go ahead, speak. Okay. Um, so the, the 75 cents per ton that was referred to represents a contribution from each of the member communities for only residential waste. And it's well below uh, what the organization assessed in previous years. So going back in time, you know, and, and the representative mentioned Judy Gott, and I was present when Judy Gott represented the town of Brantford. Um, and the date, I believe, that Brantford joined was 1993 and not 1985. But at that time, the administrative costs exceeded $4 a ton. Um, and the organization paid the operator directly. Under the current agreement, that is no longer the case. The towns will pay directly to Covanta for the processing of solid waste. And Brantford Trash might be delivered to either the Preston facility or to the Bristol facility. And in terms of how Brantford stacks up against other communities, uh, Brantford contributes approximately 12,000 tons a year. The other communities in total um, aggregate to about 120,000 tons. So order of magnitude, the town of Brantford represents about 10%, a little bit higher on the commercial end in terms of percentages, but um, I, hopefully that answers the question. Thank you, sir. Any other members of the RTM wishing to speak to this? Any members of the public wishing to speak to this? I'd like to say a couple of quick things, please. I was at the, Cook, uh, go ahead. I was at the committee meeting and um, what impressed me about the committee meeting and the 
dialogue between representatives and the selectmen and whomever is that this is another example of the process being somewhat neglected, maybe more than somewhat. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it seemed that you know this agreement uh, was not seen by to, uh, Representative Everson's point, the uh, town attorney by, I don't believe the RTM got it in a timely fashion. And I know it wasn't seen by the uh, waste, uh, uh, what's it called, the waste, the waste uh, solid waste commission. Solid oh, waste commission. And, um, you know, quite frankly, the last one, if they're not aware of this, and I think I raised this point, what are they even doing there? You know, I mean, this is a key solid waste, you know, um, agreement that they should be on top of. And they weren't even told about this from what I understand. Maybe I'm not exactly correct in that. But again, it gets back to the process. And I, I hate to jump on it every time that the process is compromised or neglected. But this is another one of those examples. And that's what, you know, Representative um, Everson and, and Representative uh, Edelman were, were saying that, you know, we didn't follow it correctly. Well, we should. It's not that hard. Any other comments from the public on this? Okay. Any further comments from the RTM? Okay. We're ready to vote on this. Uh, this is Representative Flanagan. Are there any abstentions? Are there any no votes? Are there any no votes? Hearing none, this item passes. Moving on to item 11, to consider and if appropriate, approval request from the ERACE Brantford Adult Education Program facilitator for the following 20 fiscal 20 budget transfer from salaries non-certified $3,055 to employee benefits $1,250 to advertising and printing $1,800 and to membership conference meetings $5. Representative Tuhill. Yes, thank you, Mr. Moderator. The ERTM Education Committee met and heard this item on June the 1st. Present were Representative Preet, Jackson, Anderson, Hines, Sember, and myself, the Chairman, Frank Tuhill. This was a proposed transfer of their own uh, tuition funds of about $3,000. And it was to... Um, the transfer was $1,250 to pensions, their own pensions, and they said they had to pay an advertising fee of $1,800 to Facebook. So it was heard and passed. The vote was six to nothing. And I put that in the form of a motion, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Okay. Representative Flanagan here, a motion on the floor to approve this transfer. Is there any discussion by members of the RTM? Is there any discussion from members of the public? Hearing none, we'll vote on this item. Is there any abstentions? Is there any no votes? Is there any no votes? All right, hearing none and all those in favor, this item passes. Item 12, to consider and if appropriate, approval request from the Information Te Technology Director for the following fiscal 19 to 20 fund balance transfer from on body and car camera video storage for police department, 53,000, to on body cameras for police department, $53,000. Representative Conklin, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Information Technology, Representative Alphone, I guess, right? Yeah, right. Yes, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, Back in 2016, the state mandated body cameras for all police officers. Uh, at that time, Brantford was ahead of the curve and had already started purchasing and using body cams. That same year, the RTM had allocated $60,000 into a capital account to purchase additional cameras uh, and meet state mandates. Our IT director, however, at that time was able to find a solution to meet the state mandate for only $7,000, which left $53,000 remaining in the capital account. Uh, this transfer will use up the remaining funds in that capital account to purchase 55 new cameras as ours have become outdated. Uh, and it will also <clears throat> help to purchase a cloud storage solution for those cameras. This will provide an additional layer of protection for our data backup. It was approved in committee with a seven to zero vote. I put that forward to the full RTM. 
Motion on the floor. This is Dennis Flanagan to approve this transfer. Is there any discussion from members of the RTM? Is there any discussion from members of the public? Hearing none, we'll vote on this item. Are there any abstentions? Are there any no votes? Are there any no votes? Hearing none, this item carries. Moving on to item 13, to consider and if appropriate, approval request from the Board of Police Commissioners for the following fiscal 2020 budget transfers from o overtime public events, 57,000, to vehicles, 36,000, to PD vehicle equipment, 21,000, and from regular wages, $18,765, to safety supplies, $18,765. Representative Conklin. This is Representative Conklin, thank you. Mr. Moderator, this was heard in committee on June 4th and was approved unanimously. It is uh, taking money that will be, will, would have been, sorry, left over by the end of this fiscal year especially the overtime public events with all the public events that were canceled and using it uh, to, to buy one cruiser <coughs> the equipment for that police vehicle. It will also uh, move money from regular wages uh, into safety supplies, which uh, for the most part will be um, what I know is a taser because ours are getting uh, aged out. And um, ra rather than having this money flow back into the undesignated fund balance at the end of the year, uh, we believed it was uh, appropriate to spend it on items so that we do not have to tax for them in the 2021 budget or some future budget. And again, it passed uh, in committee six nothing, and I put that in the form of a motion. Representative Flanagan here, there is a motion to approve this transfer. Is there any discussion from members of the RTM? Is there any discussion from members of the public? Yeah, I'd, I'd just like to say something, Mr. Moderator. Go ahead. Yeah, I think this is a great idea, you know, uh, I mean, because the taxpayers, right, there's a lot of them still out of work due to the pandemic. And uh, so, the, you know, this is working out great for the town. And it also also works out great for the police because they get their, uh, you know, they get their normal um, four new cars this year. Thank you. Any further discussion from members of the RTM or from the public? Hearing none, we'll vote on this item. Are there any abstentions? Are there any no votes? Yes, Representative Jackson is a no. Representative is a no. Is there any other no votes? Is there any other no votes? Hearing none, this item passes. Moving on to item 14, to consider and if appropriate, approve requests for the, from the Human Services Director for the following budget transfer for fiscal 2021 transfer from a contingency $10,556 to transfer out human services fund $10,556 and corresponding fund human service fund transfer from 2021 increased transfer in from general fund of $10,556 and increase wages and salaries by $10,556. Uh, Representative Alphone and I believe Representative Black both heard this. Yes, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, the Human Services Director has been looking into the salaries of the clinicians and staff with the help of a consultant. They did um, a study and found employee salaries are under the standard for similar positions in the area. There have been two turnovers in the last year and the director had a hard time filling the vacancies at the current wages. This $10,556 spread across seven positions will help to attract and retain top talent at the counseling center. Um, Admin services heard this at our June 2nd meeting and approved it unanimously with a seven to zero vote. I'd put that forward to the full RTM. Okay, Representative Black. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, this is Representative Black. Uh, Ways and Means also heard this transfer from contingency 
Um, again, it's not just that the wages were under, um, it's that they were so far below that we weren't, for some vacancies, we weren't getting any applications at all. Uh, obviously, when you have no applicants for a job at a particular pay rate, uh, your pay offer is too low. Uh, so we voted uh, five to nothing in favor of this transfer. Okay. Hey. Motion on the floor. This is Representative Flanagan. Motion. There's a motion on the floor from both Ways and Means and uh, Administrative Services to approve this transfer. Is there any discussion from members of the RTM? Yeah, I'm, uh, Representative uh, Sullivan. Go ahead, Representative Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I spoke to this effect at the Administrative Services meeting, and if I recall correctly, uh, Mr. Semino mentioned that even with these increases, that these salaries are still in the low range of uh, comparable positions. So. Uh, I know we can't do more than that tonight. I'm in support of this, these increases, um, but I would encourage uh, to increase the salaries even more so that it's not that we're at the low range of these salaries. Um, here in Brantford, I, I want to make sure that we are getting the best candidates and applicants for these kinds of positions at, in human services and counseling. And so uh, I would encourage trying to put more money into these salary line items to get even better candidates and retain the, can, uh, the employees that we have now. Um, so again, I'm in favor of this, what's in front of us tonight, but I would encourage um, further additional funds being put in in the near future. Okay. Any other members of the RTM wishing to speak to this? Any members of the public wishing to speak to this? Mr. Flanagan, this is uh, Representative Lombardi, and I just wanted to agree with Chris Sullivan on that, Representative Sullivan. Okay. Any other comments from either the RTM or the public? Hearing none, are there any abstentions? Are there any no votes? Are there any no votes? Therefore, the item passes. Moving on to item 15, to consider and if appropriate, approval request from the town planner for the following fiscal 20 budget transfer for the planning and zoning department from regular wages and salaries 13,000 to consulting services 13,000. Representative Alphone. Um, or Representative yeah. Black, I apologize. Yeah. You say Black. Representative Black, I believe. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Moderator, this is Representative Black. Uh, Rules and Ordinance has heard this item in committee on uh, Monday, June 8th, and voted uh, six to nothing in favor of this transfer. This is within the budget for planning and zoning. There have been two vacancies there. Uh, so the consultant has been backfilling, uh, doing the work of some of those vacancies. And also vacancies have now been filled, but uh, the new employees need to get up to speed. And the consultant has been working on training them. That's a, a new zoning enforcement officer and a new assistant planner. Uh, again, we voted six to nothing to approve. So I put that in the form of a motion. Get that? Yes, you're muted. I got that. I just want to unmute here. Uh, okay, there's a motion on the floor to approve this transfer. Uh, is there any discussions from members of the RTM? Yes, this is Representative Sullivan. Representative Sullivan, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I just wanted to speak in favor of this transfer. I was in favor of it at rules and ordinances. Um, I'm glad to hear that we're getting these uh, full-time employees into town hall. Uh, I think it's important to have full-time staff on and not be paying consultants to do work that those employees should be doing. Um, just as a point of comparison, um, we've been paying the consultant to do this work roughly $100 an hour. And I believe the positions that have been refilled uh, recently are more in the $30 to $40 an hour. So this is gonna be a savings to the town in terms of money going out. And plus we have uh, these employees that are gonna stick around hopefully and get familiar with the town and be committed to doing the work here. So I'm. I'm in favor of this, I'm glad, and I was also glad to hear um, from the town planner that uh, there won't be any more of these transfers going to consulting services in the near future because of these new employees being hired. So uh, again, I'm in favor of this transfer and I'm glad that we've got these new staff uh, hired and in their positions. Well, I, I just- Any other discussion from members of the RTM? Yeah, I have a question. Uh, yeah, two of them, go ahead. Well, I just wanted to know if this has already been paid out to the consultant and if, and I also want to know if this, um, you know, if this proposed transfer for the consultant, is this going to carry us 
through till when? Thank you. Uh, Representative Flanagan, Representative Black. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Moderator, Representative Black. This is uh, going to carry us to the end of June here. Um, this is for this fiscal year. We wouldn't be able to spend these monies in next fiscal year. Uh, so this wraps up the, uh, the billing for the um, uh, consultant. And I see uh, town planner Harry Smith is on the line too. I don't know if he has anything else to add. Any uh, further questions from members of the RTM? Any uh, questions from the public? Okay, hearing none, we're ready to vote on this item. Are there, are there any abstentions? Is there any no votes? Is there any no votes? Okay, this item carries, passes. Item 16, any other business to come before the RTM? Representative Flanagan here. Oh, Have this is Representative points. Stepanek. Representative Stepanek, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. I would just like to say briefly that on behalf of myself and my neighbors, uh, uh, something we don't say often enough is how impressed we are with the Brantford police. I think we're very lucky to have this police department. Uh, I wish them uh, well. Uh, we appreciate their sacrifice and hard work and uh, hope that they keep up the great job. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Any other, any other th items come, any business come before the RTM? Dennis Lanning in here. I like yes. Representative Sires, yes. do you have something to say? Yeah. I do, Mr. Moderator, if I may say a few words about the police department and, and the epic of what the police are subject to, so much criticism. I want my support to be registered. As many of you know, my background is in physical therapy and I train service dogs to assist the military and those who serve in uniform who are disabled. This puts me in regular contact with the police and I support them as I see them as kindred spirits equal in helping professions, trying the best they can to make people's lives better. But I do appreciate that not everybody shares this experience. Those in tough neighborhoods see police under stress, dealing with communities which fear them and don't trust them. And often their experiences leave them no choice but to fear and distrust. And it's hard to ignore these racial divides, the most recent example of the George, George Floyd is a sickening example. The best any of us can do is to be fair-minded and empathetic to both, to appreciate the difficulties of law enforcement at the ground level. Incident of divorce, family problems is proof enough. And at the same time, being empathetic to the distrust that many minorities feel toward the police. But tonight, I make it clear that I am not the sort that piles it on. I've known too many West Haven and Brantford police who are good people. I've got family and law enforcement not to paint a broad negative brush. And likewise, to friends, patients, and employees and minorities in pain. So I'll live ambiguously, and I say God bless to all and amen. Okay. Any other business to come? Dennis Flanagan, any other business to come before the RTM? Yes. Uh, I, I'd like to speak to Mr. Moderator. Yeah. Representative Tuhill, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, that was a tragic and extremely horrific act that occurred recently up in Minneapolis. And all four police officers involved in that were fired and there's criminal charges pending against them as there should be. But I do not support defunding the police. There's a new study out today which says that 80% of Americans do not support defunding the police. If the police became defunded, I believe that the amount and the number of murders and killings would rise. Here in Brantford, we're off to a great start with our new police chief, Chief Mulhern. He's doing an outstanding job. And I and all my constituents that, I've, that I have spoken to here in the first district all support the police and we totally oppose defunding 
the Brantford Police. Thank you. Dennis Flanagan, any, any other business come before the RTM? Wayne, you're not, you're muted, Wayne. Mr. Cook, you're, okay. All right, a couple quick things, please. Um, you know, I wasn't going to say this, but I'm going to say it now, you know, based upon the last few comments. Um, as you probably all know, we had a, you know, it was, uh, last December we went through probably the most devastating experience that we're ever going to go through, you know, God willing. And I just want you to know that our police department and our fire department, when they came that day, they were nothing short of magnificent. I mean, they really, really, I will never, ever, ever forget the way that they handled that traumatic and just devastating thing. And, and uh, you know, I, I called the chief, I called both chiefs after, you know, some period of time had passed and I told them that, you know, they would just, should be so, so proud of, uh, of the way that their, uh, you know, uh, department handled it. And, uh, you know, I'll just leave it at that. But I wanted, to, I did want to share it at some point because, you know, sometimes people get criticized more than they should. But, you know, I will tell you firsthand how fortunate and how lucky we are to have people like that in this town. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Cook. Uh, Dennis Flanagan, any other business to come before the RTM? If not, Representative Torelli, it's your key. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? I second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Who, who's the second? This is Representative Leach. I didn't get Oh, I'm sorry. Representative Sember? Thank you. Beginning name. This is Town Clerk Arpin. For the record, it's 9.53. Good night, all. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Hey, Frank, you on? Good night. Good night and thank you. This program was brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Watch town meetings and other videos on demand at BrantfordTV.org.